basically, you, you know, you've I've, um, I've had five losses in my career, and out of the five, there's probably two fights I can say that hurt me the most. One of them was against um, uh, Danny Garcia. Now, because you know, everything, all the titles were on the line. I had the WBA, I had the WBA Super, and I had the IBF. He had the WBC and um, and the and the Ring magazine. You see, you know, when things are going so well for you in your career, sometimes you take it for granted and you don't train as hard. The hunger is not in you. And I feel for that fight, it was one of the best wake-up calls I've ever had in my life because it made me realize that, look, I can't cheat in this sport. I can't not train hard. I have to always train hard and train like a, uh, like a challenger. And what I did was I was in training camp. I was, oh, you know, Danny Garcia can't do nothing to me. Who is he? He's not, he's not a big name. And look what happened. It was just that one punch that changed the fight. And since that fight, you know, I have totally changed my way of training, made sure I'm always 100% focused and always dedicated. And maybe this is something the, the young fighters also could take in, is always train hard and always train like a challenger. Never think you're the best because then there's always someone who, can, who will come over and beat you. And the, and the, other, and the other fight... Washington DC, um, and and obviously uh, when 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 the when the judges uh, said that uh, he um, you know when the judges said he had won the fight, I mean there was no way he won the fight. I was like I put him down twice in the fight, and how did he win the fight? Because I was the better boxer. I was the guy who was catching him more. I put him down two times, but uh, one thing where I have to respect uh, the WBA is because when the WBA heard that he was tested positive for taking testosterone and taking drugs the WBA reinstated me as world champion so in a way it didn't make the loss as bad but still you know uh, these are the main two fights here okay champ so we, have, awesome. we do have we have some questions from um, the participants okay hold on a second man. Just drop off all that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and read some of the questions, champ. Yeah, for sure. Uh, from Lautaro Moreno, he's asking, uh, what did you learn uh, from your fights when you were with Mario Quintelan Mesa? Yeah, Mario Quintelan Mesa was a Cuban two-time Olympic champion. And I fought him twice and... He beat me one time, and then I beat him the second time. But what a great fighter he was. You see, some of the fighters ah. that we see, and some of the fighters that we, 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 we see are... Yeah, Mario Kindlin was one of them Cuban champions uh, who um, never, ever turned professional. And he was such a great fighter that, you know, um, he had beaten, I, I only just found out this recently, he had beaten Miguel Cotto in the amateurs, and he had beaten me once in the amateurs, and also some other big names, who then went on to become world champions, and Mario Kindlin was a Cuban uh, legend, and I think he'll always be known as a legend. This guy was very te technical, uh, very strong, very smart, and it was had quick hands, I mean, who would know how his career would have gone if he did turn professional? But obviously, as Cubans, they cannot turn professional in their country. So, yeah. Sham, we have a question from Mauricio Reynoso. He's basically asking, um, how, how was your adaptation from an, from an Olympic boxer to a professional boxer? The transition, yeah. how was that for you? So for me, it was um, it, it was quite difficult at times. It was quite difficult at times because, you know, when you making a transition, um, you know, you need as much fights and as as much time in the gym. You need to keep on in the gym. You have to keep on training because that's gonna slowly, slowly change your style. As you know, as when I was an amateur, we used to fight for two minutes, and then when I turned professional, we fight for four and three minutes each round. But uh, to up to 12 rounds so obviously it's a longer fight so it's all about pacing yourself and, and 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 being smart in there so the transition for me it wasn't too hard but it was very exciting 
even though it was boxing, but it was just exciting because it, it brought something new to the table for me. And I obviously I love a I love a challenge, and for me it was a, it was a nice challenge. Great, uh, Vamos a darle la palabra a Jason Banana Rosario que quiere saludar al campeón. Adelante, Jason. Ok, a ver, Juancho, tenemos preguntas. Ok, we're going to move on, champ. We're going to wait for, for questions from the other uh, participants. Um, right now, you're competing 147. You've been pretty much active. I mean, you fought twice last year. You know, we know that, you know, right now everything is in, on the, in, a, in a hold, you know, due to the pandemic. But, um, You know, you, you did beat Billy D, a former world champion last year in your last fight. Uh, tell us what, what are your plans for the immediate future, right? You know, after all this is gone, all the pandemic is yeah. gone. See, it's hard to say because we don't know when boxing is going to open back up again. And the time it does open up again, we don't know when we are going to be allowed to fight in front of a big crowd. For example, now for me to fight behind closed doors, It's going to be very hard for me. You know, I'm not one of the fighters that can fight behind closed doors. I love to have an audience. I love to have people there to support you. Uh, but imagine having an empty room. I've been watching some videos. I know that Top Rank, uh, ESPN have been showing some events uh, behind closed doors. It's not the same. You know, especially for the top big fighters, it's not going to be the same having an empty arena, empty room where you're fighting. It's going to be like sparring. Now, For me, obviously, I know I fought two times. I would like to fight two times again. This uh, this year was my was my aim. But obviously, even if I get one fight this year, I'll be very happy. So I'm gonna just stay focused and let's see what happens in the future. We just hope that everybody stays safe away from this coronavirus. Hopefully, when all this clears up, then we know exactly what's gonna happen. Okay, great, champ. We do have some more questions. Uh, you can hold on for a second so I can read them. Uh, from Jessica Palmeta, a uh, journalist from Argentina. Okay. Um, you know, you did... Um, you know, she wants to basically ask, uh, you know, in your experience, you know, how, how much more difficult or different was your fight when you were fighting in the amateur level uh, versus fighting in the professional level in boxing? Yeah. You see, as an amateur boxer, you only have maybe three rounds or four rounds when I was fighting. And it's not many rounds to show your show, showcase. Some fighters start slow. Some fighters start fast. You, look, you see, I was quite lucky where I was a fast starter. Now, that's why I always prefer professional boxing than amateur boxing because it's a 12-round fight. It's more rounds. You could be losing the first three rounds in a professional fight, but you can come back and knock the guy out in the mid rounds or the, towards the end of the fight. So I think it's always good to have more rounds. So that way it makes it a little bit more, uh, it gives a chance to the opponent to come back. And, uh, you know, it's good for the fans as well. Short fights, you don't really get to enjoy them. Long fights are the ones that you enjoy more of. Okay, thank you, champ. We remind the participants that you can ask questions anytime. Le recordamos a todos los participantes que pueden hacer preguntas al campeón en cualquier momento. Juancho, ¿tenemos preguntas? Ok, yo sé momento, Chan. A ver, eh, Damián Faro quiere participar. Damián Faro want to participate. Go ahead, Damián. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for taking my question. But uh, I just want to ask, <clears throat> are you still, like, to me, it seems like you're cherry picking your own fights. Are you wanting to be active? Are you wanting to fight for chan uh, world champions again? Uh, What's next for Amir Khan? I want to see you headline in big events. So I just want to know what your thoughts are on this.
Okay, Damien, hold on a second. Sham, are you still there? Yeah, that's better. So you have to unmute it. Sorry about that, uh, Ludo. So yeah, uh, brilliant question. Listen, amazing question, um, Damien. And I tell you, so basically, you know, when I had the last fight, obviously the last fight wasn't at the caliber that I, I normally fight. I normally fight the top 10 guys and stuff like that. See, it was after the Crawford fight. Uh, I fought Crawford, who was probably one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. And when I fought him, obviously I got beat in that fight. And then Literally, eight weeks later, I get a phone call from uh, Saudi Arabia to say, would you like to host a fight? Now, that's the reason we went and took that fight. And it, I know it was against Billy Dip. He had to move up to uh, upper weight to fight me. But that's the fight that the promoters put for me and put in front of me. You see, I just had an operation on my elbow at the time. And they said to me that, look, um, and they, they were the ones who agreed to take, to take that fight on. So really, when it comes to cherry picking, I don't think I've ever cherry picked my last my, my fight apart from the last one, which was a little bit more easier. And I think I was the A side going into that fight. But um, no, no, I understand where you're coming from. And and also, um, look, that in the future, I want to fight maybe one or two more times. And let's see what the options are. I want to, um, there was talks of me fighting Kel Brook. And then what he did was go up to 154 when he knows that I'm a 147 pound fighter. So why move up to 154? Secondly, you know, there's other big names around there, like the Garcia, Danny Garcia rematch. I would love to have the rematch uh, with him would be amazing. Um, and, you know, let's see where things turn out. Let's just hope that it opens up quite soon because the longer we're leaving it, you know, I'm 33 now. And I want to make sure that I, you know, get these next couple of years and keep myself very busy because, you know, you're getting older and obviously you need to keep yourself moving as well. Spawn. Uh, no, I, I totally agree. Uh, I just love to see you uh, in the ring with Hellbrook. That would be amazing. Yeah, man. I mean, look, uh, that's a fight that everybody in the UK wants to see. And, um, you know, I even, when we, me and Eddie Hearn, when I was with Eddie as my promoter, we spoke about that fight and I was cool with it. When we started negotiation on that fight at 147, Hellbrook then decides to go up to 154, yeah. which I don't understand why, you know? And I think, yeah. in a way, I know I get all the blame that I don't want the fight, but I'm not, I wasn't the one. I was. I'm still the one at 147, and obviously the fight was supposed to be made at 147. But then why did it get made out? Why did he move up to 154? You know. Yeah. So, so there's a lot to it, really. And uh, obviously, a lot of the fans and a lot of boxing people don't really know much about the behind the scenes, what really happens. I think I, I think that's 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 the case because behind the scenes, no one knows what goes on. Uh, exactly. And I yeah. think, I think, but look, you heard it from uh, me, man. And uh, obviously, look, um, no, no, yeah. no, that's great. It's great. Like, obviously, we, we've had a chat here, and I think that, uh, yeah. we thank I'm the WBA for that. this because we have to thank the WBA for this because you would never have got the answer if you didn't ask me on the WBA exactly. Uh, thank you, the WBA. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I'm here. I've watched you in the Olympics, still vote for you, still fight for you. Oh, thank Keep you very much, man. What are you doing? And, uh, no, no, I really let's appreciate it, man. Let's see the big shiny lights. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll bump into you one day. All right, bro. <laughs> nice to see yeah, you, no man. Take care. Best. Thank you. Tell her.